It is a Tuesday morning and a very warm welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on SABC3. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, in today's day and age, we love to send each other pictures on our smartphones. But if a wrong picture falls into the wrong kind of hands, the question is who holds the responsibility when the lines between the public and personal spaces are blurred? Now, a recent social media controversy has raised this issue and social media law expert Emma Sadlier is joining us on the line to chat to us about this. Emma, thank you very much for taking the call. Morning, Kat. Thank you. Nice to speak to you. So there's, of course, a risk and a responsibility that is incumbent on the person sharing the content, um, you know, on our smartphones, as I've just said. But are there any implications of sharing this kind of content if it's done by someone else in a public space? Yes, so I think that we need to talk about privacy. You know, privacy has changed in the digital age. Um, I think a lot of people think privacy doesn't exist, and it certainly does exist. The more you look after your own privacy, the more privacy you have, which sounds like quite a complicated idea. Yeah. But, but, but basically, if you've got a social media account, you're on Facebook or you're on Instagram, and you've got maximum privacy controls, and you're careful about what you upload, you're careful about who has access to your content, then your right to privacy over that material is much higher than the person who has an open account who mm -hmm. doesn't look after their privacy at all. Now, I go around speaking a lot at schools, at companies, at universities, teaching people about how badly things can go wrong on social media. And I have to tell you, Kat, that my message has changed recently because I used to go around saying if you wouldn't put it on social media, you wouldn't put it on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, if you wouldn't put it on a huge billboard. Mm -hmm. You know, think of, your, think of what you're about to put online on a big billboard next to a busy highway, next to a huge photograph of your face, your name, the name of the school you go to, or if you're working, the name of the company that you work for, then don't put it online. But mm -hmm. my message now has changed. My message now is that you wouldn't want it on that big billboard. Don't let it exist in digital format. Yeah. Because we live, in, we live in an age of a screenshot. And the screenshot is the devil. I can be chatting to you. We can have a private conversation. You could take a screenshot and send it on. Absolutely. You'd certainly be infringing my privacy. But the problem is that once that material is out there, it's out there. Yeah, and of course, even with things like Snapchat, that uh, disappear after 24 hours, the screenshot is always there, as you've just said. So, uh, of course, there's this whole thing of, of naming and shaming, or as they call it, putting people on blast on social media. So if your name happens to be attached to a controversial image, how much of a right does the public have in searching for your personal uh, profiles on social media and then using certain elements of that? Well, in theory, I mean, I think that everybody, as soon as you're interested in somebody for whatever reason, whether you get a CV and you want to check the person out or you've got a meeting with somebody mm -hmm. or for some reason somebody's in the news, for example, you know, as, as we saw in the last week, we've had a few of these, um, these cases. And the first thing people do is to search for that person. They want visuals. They want to see what that person looks like. Yeah. They want to see what that person um, is up to in life because everybody has become a celebrity in the digital age. Every single person with a social media account is now a celebrity. And I can find out quite intimate details about their lives um, as long as I've got their name and an internet connection. So I think that's the default is that people do that. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I say in my, t my talks is that you never know when you're going to become, uh, you know, the subject of, of public attention or media attention. Yeah. Uh, we've seen it recently. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of when Mali van Breda, you remember the... the um, the, 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 the Henry van Breda, who's, who's been arrested uh, for the for the axe uh, killings, uh, you know, uh, that was that happened um, uh, uh, quite a while ago now. Uh, Marley van Breda, she was in a coma, and suddenly she became the subject of the world's press attention. Hmm. And everybody went to her Instagram account, which at the time was open. Um, you just never know. And if, if the material is open, available for anybody to use, then the, then the media kind of takes the approach that they use it, um, which is why I think that everybody should should have privacy settings and be very careful about who has access to digital content. Yeah, and of course, uh, very recently, I think in a very specific case that we can all think about because it was, uh, of course, uh, on social media, the, you know, the, the production of this the memes and uh, obviously mm. the association of family names and people's names mm. are getting dragged into this. So with regards to that, what's the responsibility of sharing this information which then further violates privacy? Yeah, well, I think everybody who shares those pictures is in the chain of publication and is responsible for that yeah. content. So just because you didn't create it, you weren't the one who went to that Facebook profile, got pictures yeah. of family members and created that meme, just by pressing the share button or sending it on, you're as responsible as the person who created it. So people do need to understand that. Um, but at the moment, our law is a little ill-equipped. You know, we deal with this category that we call revenge pornography, um, which is where people share sort of 
private sexual images without the consent of the person. Um, and, and actually, I'm in Parliament this morning making submissions to, to one of the, the committees because they're, they're, we're just about to criminalize revenge porn in South Africa, mm. which basically will mean that anybody who shares those images without the consent of the person depicted could be arrested. And their names appearing on the Sexual Offenders Register, which I think is long overdue, and I'm very excited that, that we are going to have these laws to try and combat this behavior. Yeah, social media law expert Emma Sadley are talking to us this morning, advising us about our responsibility when it comes to social media, even on a personal level, as, uh, as, as close as your smartphone. Emma, thank you so much for taking our call.